Well, hello, hope all is well. This is the five-minute recap of last week's message. It's the fastest five minutes of the week, to be sure. We talked about boldness and what does it mean to be bold in a culture that is changing so quickly. Um, We talked about the fact that we oftentimes tend to think the mark of a believer is their behavior. But maybe, maybe just maybe, the mark of a believer is the opposition that they face. Um, We talked about the fact that if you're not running into opposition, Or Satan, maybe you're swimming in the same direction. If we live our lives differently as a disciple of Jesus, we're going to face some opposition. We read this passage in Acts chapter 4. It's in this amazing prayer of the disciples. They're suffering persecution. This is what they prayed. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. They didn't ask for problems and persecution to go away. They asked for more boldness in the face of of their problems and the persecution that they were facing. Then this weekend, we also made it really clear, this was not a halftime pep talk by a head coach encouraging everybody to go out and be bold. We talked about the fact that boldness is a result. Boldness is not something that you conjure up, you gin up on your own, you discipline yourself for boldness. Boldness is the result of something. It's the result of a bunch of things. It's the result of exercising boldness when approaching God. Therefore, Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace. We need to be bold when approaching God. The size and strength of your boldness with God may be an indicator of the size and strength of your God. And we often come to prayer. We come to God real timid, not understanding the authority that we have. Be bold. The second one, be bold because you know who you are. Numbers 13, the story of the spies that uh, go through the promised land, they come back to have a positive report. The rest have a negative report. This is what those with the negative report said. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. The spies blew it, not because of the giants in the land. The spies blew it because they saw themselves as grasshoppers. We have a small, inaccurate view of God. We're going to lack boldness. When we have a small and inaccurate view of ourself, when we see ourselves as grasshoppers in, the, in, the, in, in whatever giants we're facing, it's going to hinder our boldness. We need to have a realistic view. We need to see ourselves as warriors and not as grasshoppers. The third thing is you need to know what you're equipped with for the spirit. Uh, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God has given us a spirit of power. We have authority. We need to walk in it. We need to grow in it. Love. Why is love listed here? Well, love does a couple things. It encourages you to uh, be bold and to reach out to want to make a difference. It propels you to uh, make a difference in someone's life. But love also keeps you from being a jerk. You could be really bold. You could be a street preacher yelling at everybody that they're going to hell. That's being bold, but that's not love. So we need both power and love. And the version we read, the King James Version, has uh, giving you a sound mind. Other versions say self-discipline. But a sound mind is sober discretion, prudence, well-balanced, seeing things in his perspective, steadiness. That's what it is. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of power, love, and steadiness. All right? And last point, don't be bold on your own. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So if you're going to be bold, In a changing culture, don't be bold on your own. And it's important to remember that he's got this four-word phrase included in the text. Do not be discouraged. God knows that we're going to be discouraged. God knows that we're going to be frustrated. God knows that we're going to be overwhelmed, if I could use that word at times. Um, So that's why he's telling us, I know you're going to run into stuff. Be strong. Be courageous. Don't be discouraged. It, It is easy. For us to be discouraged. And the other phrase in this passage that you probably know so well is the Lord your God. Obedience is necessary for God's active company, God's active presence in our life. So being bold is a result of being bold before God, seeing him as big. Being bold is a result of not seeing yourself as a grasshopper, but seeing yourself as a warrior. Being bold is the result of knowing that you are equipped with power, love, and a steadiness or a sound mind. And if you're going to be bold, don't be bold on your own. Um, The Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. All right, that's it. Take care.
God bless. Wow, this one's actually five minutes. Take care. Bye.